Welcome back, everybody, to a Wednesday edition of the Wahoo All In live streams, live workouts uh, presented by the Sufferfest. Today, we have Coach Susie back with us for another strength workout. Um, to date, highly requested, uh, both um, here, social, and uh, in the app, is some upper body, more specific swim kind of workouts. I know a lot of people um, are asking for these because one, getting into a pool right now with the current situation is tough. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that we we got you guys some resources um, and some tools to use um, while you're at home. So if you have some uh, some bands, some um, elastic bands that you use for uh, resistance, go ahead and grab those now. Uh, jump off the live stream, go grab them now. Come back. We'll we won't start without you, or maybe we will if you have to dig them out of the basement. Um, but go ahead and get those ready. If you don't have them, you can also use an old inner tube or just pay attention today. Uh, follow the instruction and then come back and watch the video again once you have uh, some bands ready because we are going to be doing some dynamic motion um, and using that resistance from the bands. So uh, final thing I'll say about this before we jump right into the workout is if you're not currently a SUF subscriber, uh, go ahead and check out all that information down below in the uh, description. The link, the code, everything is there. We're still offering, um, it's 44 days uh, free trial. So uh, go ahead and jump on. Also jump on the uh, the all-in uh, soft training plans um, that are specifically tailored for uh, being at home right now and not really having specific targets to, to prepare for, just keeping the, uh, the body kind of primed and ready to go. Um, and so that once you kind of have some new targets and goals in place, uh, you can start ramping up the intensity uh, or in this case, getting into the pool again. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, bring it over to Susie and we'll get the workout started. Today should be about a 40-ish minute workout. Um, so plan accordingly and we won't take up any more time because we know a lot of people are uh, fitting this into lunch hour or uh, managing kids and, and the rest of the things that go on with, with all of us being at home right now. So thanks for joining and we'll catch up with you at the end. Hey, Susie. Hey, Matt. Good morning. Welcome Welcome. back. Thank you. All right. I'll let you guys jump right into it. Thanks. All right. Here we go, guys. Uh, Like Matt said, get your bands ready. Um, If you need another minute to do that, I will um, talk about the different kind of bands you can use. Maybe I've got a whole bunch of stuff here um, to show you. So if you have resistance bands that are actually meant for training, um, like mini bands with a little, um, you know, continuous loop. These are great for the sideways band walks and the fire hydrants will do. Um, You can also use a band with handles on it. Um, You can use this for pretty much anything, just will depend on how you hold it. Um, If you don't have any you know, resistance bands per se, you can take some bike tubes. So this is a regular bike tube. I just cut the valve off. Um, So with it long, there are a lot of options and um, I'll try and use this for most things so that you all can see how it's done if you don't have a real band. Um, You can tie the ends together to make it a loop and then double it up to make a a mini band, like the little blue one I just showed you. So you can double that up, put that around your knees and do the uh, mini band walks. You can also tie this, tie one end to something sturdy and we will do that um, because you're gonna be pulling um, for a couple exercises. And if all you have are mountain bike tubes, which is all I had. I had to go to the bike shop to find that one. Um, You can take a mountain bike tube, cut it in half lengthwise. So I think this is actually even a little short unless it's an old 26. Um, But if you use it full full width, um, it'll probably be too strong a resistance. So I cut it in half so it's only one layer as opposed to, you know, the road tube that's still got the hollow round, the full tube. So I cut it in half and then I cut it lengthwise, which makes it about the same resistance as the road tube. So you can use whatever you've got 
will try and uh, make it happen. So today's workout is focused on swimming. So nothing that we do is going to be, you know, absolutely perfect for replicating swimming because you just can't. But we're trying to, um, you know, really just keep the neuromuscular patterns firing so that when you do get into the pool again, you still have your synapses and your nervous system and your brain muscle connection firing and working as well, better than if you hadn't done anything. <laughs> okay, so some of this stuff will be mobility, some will be strength, some will be core, some will be arms. Um, and I'll talk to you through a little bit more as we go. So hopefully everyone's got your stuff. You're also gonna need a broom or a broom handle. So if you want, well, a lot of brooms, you can take the actual broom head off of the stick. So all you need is the stick portion. If you don't have one handy or whatever, that's fine. You can just pretend you have it on your back. We're gonna start with um, good morning. So you're gonna take your broom handle Put it on your the back of your shoulders like you're doing a squat in the gym with the bar. And we'll face this way. So um, this is just like the single leg RDLs and the hip hinges that we've done for the last few weeks. You're going to keep your feet right under your hips. I want you to press your heels into the ground. Squeeze your butt so your hips are underneath your shoulders. Everything's stacked up, shoulders, hips, feet. Um, with the broomstick, you're just lightly pressing it down onto your shoulders to keep a little tension through your shoulder blades. So you're gonna feel like you're pulling your shoulder blades down your back and back so your chest isn't rounding forward, okay? So nice proud chest. I want you to think proud chest all the way through it as well as weight in your heels and belly button to spine. So here from this starting position, you're gonna hinge at the hips, so press your hips back Bring your chest down only as low as your hamstrings will stretch. So that's about it for me. Keeping your knees soft, press into your heels, squeeze your butt to bring your hips forward. Okay, so this is all about hinging at the hips, not bending at the waist. Okay, you're not lifting with your low back to come up from the down position. You're pressing your hips forward and using your glutes and hamstrings. Okay, we're going to do 30 seconds of this. So everyone ready? Three, two, one, and go. So really press your feet into the ground through the whole movement and squeeze those glutes as you come forward or as you come up. Keep it nice and controlled. This is not a speed movement. Just press your chest forward as you hinge, like you're reaching your hips back towards the wall behind you. Two, one, and rest. Okay. Um, you can put your broom down. Next, we're going to go to a diagonal shoulder raise. So work in the rotator cuff and shoulder stability. So take your inner tube or your long band, ideally. Um, you can take it, wrap the band around one hand like that so it's nice and sturdy. And then you don't have to really grasp it as hard. So you're gonna keep that hand down low at your side. You can have it just right next to your thigh. Keep that shoulder pulled down and back. So that scapula is pulled down into your back pocket. And then take your other hand, this is the working arm. You can, again, wrap the band around your hand, but find what you think is gonna be the best resistance to start. So you want, you want your hand to start right about chest height, and then you're gonna pull, actually you're gonna turn your thumb down, sorry, thumb down right at chest height, and then you're gonna lift diagonally up over the shoulder. So you can move your hand down to make more resistance or up the tube for less resistance. Okay, as you go up and give yourself less resistance, you're gonna have 
um, a shorter range of motion. So once you find your spot, then you can wrap the band around and that'll be our, um, our resistance. Okay, 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. So we're keeping the arms straight and just lifting up and back. You can feel that in your shoulder. This is uh, great for the shoulders, mid-back stability and range of motion. So a lot of people have trouble getting their hand up all the way up over the shoulder. That shoulder range of motion can be limited for a lot of people. And rest, switch sides. So you should be able to just keep your hands where they are. Just take your thumb and turn it down. Bring that right hand or whatever hand you didn't just work down by your side. And we're gonna pull up with the other. Three, two, one, and go. 30 seconds again. You may feel a difference in strength and mobility between sides, which is pretty normal. So if you need to give yourself more resistance, so if you need to move your hands on the band because this arm is stronger or more mobile, you can get more range of motion, you can adjust as you go. And rest. Okay, next up, we're gonna anchor the band. So take your band, tie it about hip to belly button height around something sturdy. Um, I'm gonna tie mine sort of short so that I'm still in the camera frame. All right. So on this one, we're gonna do external rotation. This is another rotator cuff muscle um, exercise. This one is great for shoulder um, scapula stability. If you have, for future reference, since I didn't tell you to have it ready, if you have a towel or something, you can roll up and stick it between your elbow and your ribs. It's a great way to make sure you keep the elbow really tight to your body. Because you wanna keep as um, stable through the shoulder as you can. So you're gonna take your band um, or stand with your working arm away from your anchor point because we're gonna pull away from it. So you can take your band, again, wrap it around your hand so you don't have to grip as hard and then adjust your body for the appropriate resistance you need. So if you have something you can, like a water bottle even, you can just squeeze between your body and your elbow. That works. Or a kitchen towel, something you can just roll up. So we're gonna do 30 seconds. Again, pull that shoulder down and back. And then with your hand neutral or thumb facing away from you, we're gonna, just gonna keep your elbow in close to your side and rotate the hand out. So your shoulder, you're like a rotisserie chicken, kind of. Okay, 30 seconds here, ready, go. So this is another controlled motion, really focusing on keeping that shoulder stable and not letting it come forward. So you should feel that the middle of your back working because you're holding that shoulder blade pulled back. Five more seconds. Two, one, rest. Switch sides. I'm gonna have to turn my back to the camera here, um, but then you can probably see my arm pulling out away from the body. So switch arms and three, two, one, and go. So as you go through all these exercises, you can adjust your body to change the resistance level 
if you feel like your muscles are fatiguing and you're losing form or you don't want to lose form, just adjust your feet a little bit closer to the anchor point so that your resistance decreases slightly and that way you can maintain rest, your form. Um, now we're gonna go opposite. We're gonna do internal rotation. So you're gonna take your hand closest to the anchor point and pull towards your body instead of away from it. So again, keeping your elbow close to your body, you're just gonna find a, Find where your band is slightly taut, but it's not uh, firm. Pull the elbow in, shoulder down and back. I'm gonna pull your hand right to your belly button. Okay, 30 seconds here. Ready, go. So again, keeping that shoulder and elbow right in place, and you're just pivoting. Internal rotation is really important for swimming. So when you bring that arm up overhead, your shoulder blade moves up and out. And so that position right there, your shoulder blade is up and out and internally rotated. Rest. Switch arms. Okay. Sorry, got to turn my back to you again. 30 seconds, other arm, ready, go. You're probably gonna find that internal rotation is a lot easier than external. It's a much stronger motion. We use internal rotation a lot more frequently throughout our just daily activities. Three, two, one, rest. All right, moving on. We're gonna go down to the floor and do um, some mobility and rotation. Spider-Man with rotation. So we've done this in previous episodes as a warm-up. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. So first option, Starting in push-up position, you're gonna bring your right foot up next to your right hand, drop that left knee so it's resting on the floor, squeeze your left glute so you're pressing your hip forward, and then take your right hand, reach forward, up, and bring your chest toward your right leg. So you're opening your chest to the side while pushing your hips down and forward. Bring the hand back to the floor, switch your feet, and repeat same thing on the other side. The other option is to keep the back knee off the floor. So you're gonna still squeeze your glute and press your hips down and forward and rotate towards that front leg. So whichever way you choose, um, it's just up to you and your mobility. If you are, have really tight hips, you're probably gonna be better with keeping your knee down on the floor. But um, try both ways and see what feels best to you. Okay, we're gonna do um, 60 seconds alternating every time. So you can go at your own pace. You don't have to follow my pace. Okay, ready? Go. So make sure you press that heel back so that your glute engages a lot easier. That front foot, press it, your whole foot into the floor. Put a little bit of weight in that foot so you have kind of equal weight distribution between legs and hand. And that's gonna help activate the muscles of the posterior chain. So your glute and hamstring on that front leg. As you rotate, really open your chest up, reach that hand up and around. So you get as much mobility as possible through that mid back. Okay, rotation is really important in swimming. Last one, rest. Okay, uh, while you're on the floor, 
you can take your band. If you have a mini band like this, um, take that, put it around your knees, just above your knees. So just step into it, pull it up around your knees. If you need to take your, if you need to untie your band from the anchor point, you would just tie it. So it's one continuous loop. This is my mountain bike tube. And then you can either tie it uh, short enough to be perfect um, width and then step through it or you can double it up. So um, I'll just go double band. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go um, fire hydrants. So if you want to kneel on your yoga mat or towel for padding, recommend that. So we're gonna keep good stability through our shoulders, hips, and core, and pull the knee out to the side. So you're only lifting that knee out as far as you can keep your hips and shoulders level with the floor. So pull that belly button up to spine, shoulders down and back, and then just moving that knee out as far as your strength and range of motion allows. Okay, 30 seconds here, ready, go. So just one leg, we'll do 30 seconds and then switch sides. So this is a glute medius primarily exercise. So you should feel a little bit of burn starting on that side of your butt. Three more seconds and rest. We're gonna switch sides, so now the other leg. Three, two, one, go. Tell you, double band really gets that muscle firing. <laughs> Halfway. Five more seconds. Two, one, rest. All right, take that band off. And maybe open up your yoga mat. We're gonna go down to the floor for Superman. So you're gonna lie on your stomach. And we're gonna lift, this is a low back, upper back, glute, hamstring, kind of entire posterior chain exercise. We're gonna do 30 seconds isometric Superman. So we're gonna lift and hold. Actually, I'll turn the other way so you can see body position better. Okay, you lie on your stomach, bring your arms out in front, thumbs up, point your toes, and lengthen your body as much as you can. So really reach both directions, toes and fingers away from each other. Legs stay straight, they don't have to be together, they can be slightly apart. You're just gonna lift and hold. Okay, we're gonna do 30 seconds. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. Want to keep your belly button pulled into your spine so that you're not really pushing your belly into the floor and lifting with your back. You are lifting with your back, but we wanna keep the abs engaged still. Five seconds. Keep your eyes just down in front so you're not craning your head up and rest. Whew. That one does uh, burn a little after a while. Okay, we're gonna stay on the floor. You can stay um, where you are or adjust if you need to. We're gonna use that band that's anchored to, well, my weight rack, whatever whatever you have that's sturdy. So if you need to retie that band, go ahead. 
And just watch as I demo this exercise. Actually, I lied. We're not doing that yet. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to do plank with um, legs sliding. So we're going to be on the elbows for low plank. Lift one foot. Pull that heel out and then back to the center. So again, this is glute medius. Same muscle that you just worked on the fire hydrants, plus your core is gonna have to work a lot harder now to hold your plank position. So we're gonna do 30 seconds, take a brief rest, and then switch legs. Okay, three, two, one, go. So make sure you get into your plank position and you're stable before you lift that leg. Again, you're not going real far with a range of motion, just far enough that it's gonna activate the muscle and challenge your core. Two, one, rest. Drop down, ready to switch sides. Okay, three, two, one, go. Other leg. So you'll notice that your supporting leg is working pretty hard. This is probably harder on the supporting leg than the leg that's actually moving. So really keep that belly button pulled up. Glute tight on that supporting leg. Five seconds. Two, one, rest. Ooh, good job. Okay, back to Superman. Since we're on our belly, we're gonna do another set. So arms out, thumbs up. Three, two, one, lift and hold. That belly button pulled in, squeezing the glutes to lift. Feel your hamstrings working too. Upper back. Keep going. Five seconds. And rest. Whew. Okay, stay where you're at. We're going to do push ups. So, these are going to be narrow grip push ups. We did these last week. So, hands right outside or underneath of your chest. You want your elbows to point straight back behind you instead of out to the sides. So it's gonna put a lot of emphasis on your triceps. Okay, in general, um, push-ups really work your serratus anterior, which is about here, which is a very important muscle in swimming. So that's why we're doing push-ups. Okay, 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Remember, you can drop your knees down to the floor to make it easier. You can also start on your toes. And if you fatigue during the set, just drop your knees whenever that happens. Keep those shoulders pulled back so you're not letting your chest round as you lower down. Almost done. Two, one, rest. Good job, take a knee. Um, we're gonna move back up onto our feet to our anchored band. We're gonna do a swim stroke, but you might have to modify it a little bit um, for you know your band resistance or what kind of band you have. If you're using a band with handles, you can just loop it around your anchor point and take, well, it's gonna make me a little too long. Um, you're gonna put your hand on the handle, but try not to grip it real hard. I want you to keep your grip loose and just keep enough grip that the band doesn't go anywhere, right? So we're gonna go through a swim stroke um, or simulated swim stroke. We're just trying to, Again, like I said, 
keep the neuromuscular patterns firing correctly. So on this one, I think the most important thing is that high elbow catch position. So um, with your band, give yourself just a, a little resistance at the start so that when you get that catch position, so you're bringing that hand down and your elbow up, your elbow's really staying where it is, but thinking high elbow here, you've got medium resistance. And then as you pull, your resistance is gonna increase. So find that point wherever the resistance is good. If your resistance is too much, you can't come all the way back like mine is. Just stop wherever the band stops you. Keep that elbow high and bring the hand forward. So now you can re-extend as if you were entering the water here. Catch and pull. Okay, we're gonna do um, 30 seconds on one arm and then switch. Ready, two, one, go. If you have swim stretch cords, you can use those instead. I know they've been pretty hard to get over the last couple months. I have two pairs because I bought one set a long time ago and rarely use it because it's resistance is too high. So rest, switch sides, switch sides. So I went online and tried to buy a new band, less resistance, and they were back ordered because everyone's been trying to buy them. But I finally got them. So if you have them like this, they've got paddles on the end. Those are great. I just know that not everyone probably has them. <laughs> okay, other arm, ready? 30 seconds, go. So elbow up and then pull straight back. So you may be saying, this really doesn't feel like I'm swimming at all, which is fine. I really just want you to remember that you're training the neuromuscular pathway. So I think as a coach, the most common problem I see with athlete swimming form, rest, is that high elbow, maintaining that high elbow catch position. So they come in the water here and let the arm fall straight through instead of keeping that elbow high and catching and then pushing your body past it because you're really grabbing that water, right? And then propelling it, using that to push your body. So this exercise with the band is really a, a good catch drill, if you will. So, um, all right, back down to the floor. We're gonna do push-ups again. This time, wide hands. So, outside or underneath of your shoulders. We're gonna do 30 seconds. Again, toes or knees, or combination of both, whichever is right for you. Okay, three, two, one, go. So this version is gonna work your chest, your pecs specifically, a lot more than your triceps like the last one we did. Squeeze those glutes, keep your hips tucked under. Five more seconds. Two, one, rest. Job. Shake out the arms. We're going back to the swim strokes. You know, grab a drink of water. All right. Find that the appropriate resistance for you again. We're going to do 30 seconds each arm. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So when you reach out as if your arm is entering the water, you can really reach through that shoulder like you're reaching over that barrel, doing that internal rotation. 
just like you're swimming. So you're not rotating your body as if you were swimming, but you can still get that good rest extension and internal rotation. Okay, other side. Three, two, one, go. Ten more seconds. Two, one, rest. All right, now either take that band off your anchor, loop it, um, tie it and loop it around itself, or put your mini band on. We're gonna do same position as fire hydrants, up above the knees. This time we're gonna do a lateral band walk. So it's the, Basically, the same motion as the fire hydrant, but we're on our feet and we're going to go move side to side. So, hips back and then down into a partial squat. Start with your feet about hip width, chest up, belly button to spine. I want you to think about pulling your heel out as you step to the side. So, thinking about pulling your heel out is going to activate your glute med. So we're gonna take a few steps one way and then a few steps back the other way. We're just gonna go continuously sideways for 30 seconds, okay? So y'all got your band ready. Three, two, one, go. So I want you to only step as far as you're keeping that knee over top of your foot. So your knees, to really push your knees into the band, you should feel that on the side of your butt. Three, two, one, rest. All right, band off. We're gonna go back down to the floor. For V ups. Whew. Okay, this is a very core focused exercise. We're going to lift our shoulders and legs up towards each other at the same time. So you're really pulling your belly button into your spine. Your arms are going to be overhead. You can use your arms kind of swing them to generate as much or as little momentum as you want or need. So it's gonna look like this. So the stronger you are, um, think less arm swing and more lift with your abs. It's gonna require a little bit of hip flexor, um, strength and flexibility. If you're real tight, you're going to want to bend your knees, which is fine. You can do that. You can also do bend your knees to make it a little easier. Okay. So we're going to go for 30 seconds. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So I want you to keep your chin up off your chest. Lift your chest to the ceiling, not your legs. Five seconds. And rest. Ooh, good job. Those get hard. Okay, we're gonna go um, I'm going to skip around a little bit, a little bit different from the app to get some certain exercises in because we're getting short on time. Okay, we're going to do 
Now we're gonna do the plank with the band row. So you're gonna need your band that's anchored. We're gonna get in plank position and we're gonna pull the elbow out and back. So you're having to hold that plank with your core while with one arm, mind you, while the other arm pulls back. So you're getting your shoulder and your arm to move through that range of motion, which is again, not particularly, you know, swim specific, but it's good for activating all those muscles and challenging your core strength. So we're gonna go 30 seconds and then switch sides. So get that band wrapped around one hand, find your plank position. You can adjust during if you need to. Three, two, one, go. Have to move back a little. So your feet can be wider than your shoulders for better stability. Try and keep your hips level with the floor so you're not shifting away. Ooh, this is hard. Three seconds and rest. Ooh, good job, switch sides. Wrap that band around the hand. Okay, other side. Three, two, one, go. Five seconds. And rest. Oh, good job. Sorry, I couldn't talk much during that one. <laughs> You're gonna stay on the floor. You're gonna lie on your side with your hip on your mat. This is gonna be scissor kicks on your side. So imagine being in the water, you know, in that rotated position. We're gonna do a flutter kick. So you can either take your top hand and use it for stability in front of your chest. So you're gonna lift your legs and then scissor. I want you to think about pulling your heels back more than kicking your toes forward. Okay, so we wanna keep your feet in line with your hips and shoulders and then back. Okay, we're gonna do 30 seconds. Ready? Lift, go. If you want more challenge, you can keep that top arm up. So you're having to use your core to balance on your hip. Point your toes like you're swimming. So this is good for swimming because again, you wanna Get propulsion on the down and up. Rest, switch sides. Almost done, guys. We'll do this side and then a little stretch to finish off. Okay, three, two, one, go. So only go as fast as you can keep control. The faster you go, the more you're gonna wanna rock and roll around. It's harder to maintain stability. Pull those heels back. You should feel it in your hamstrings and glutes. Two, one, rest. Whew, good job. All right, we'll cool down with an alternating pigeon stretch. So kind of like we did last week, um, starting in 
push-up position. So hands and toes in a high plank. You're gonna pull your knee up forward behind your hand. Your foot comes up behind your other hand. Now take your back knee, press it down to the floor so you're kind of pressing your hips down. You're gonna hold that for a second and then come back to plank. Pull the other knee up, press down and switch. So we'll do five on each side. One. This is gonna give you a good glute hip stretch. For a deeper stretch on that back straight leg, squeeze your glute as you press your hip down towards the floor. It's gonna open up the hip flexor on that side a little more, which is what I need. Last one. Good. All right. So guys, that was mm, maybe three quarters of the workout. Um, if you do this later in the app, you can obviously go through the whole workout. Um, sorry, it's just, it takes a little bit longer to instruct each exercise because um, the app will show you a preview of the exercise during your 10 second rest period. So it's a little bit more time efficient in the app, but um, I hope you joined today and learned a little bit more about why we do certain exercises and how to do them properly and you know what you should feel um, in each of them. So um, it can be a really, even though we didn't get through the whole workout, it can be a really beneficial um, you know, learning tool for you. So you can always come back and replay this too if you forget how to do something or whatever else, um, or if you just want to see my face again. <laughs> every Wednesday, right, Susie? Yeah. We're here every Wednesday. <laughs> That's right. So, well, thanks, Susie. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you next Wednesday. It looks like I think we have um, another strength workout next Wednesday. Um, but, you know, if you're watching this and you really enjoyed the swim stuff, and you want to do something like that again, I'm sure we could uh, convince Coach Susie to um, mm. to do something again. So uh, definitely leave a comment, send us a message, um, and we will uh, we'll take it into consideration for sure. Thanks, Susie. I'll yes. see you soon. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Take care. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining for another uh, Wednesday uh, workout. Today was uh, focused on upper body, uh, specifically um, kind of towards uh, swimming. Uh, exercises and the muscle groups that are used for that. Just keeping, um, as Susie said, that stuff kind of engaged and activated um, right now. So uh, really appreciate her leading us through that. Uh, like I said, if you if you enjoyed today's workout, definitely um, give us a like and a follow. Uh, also, when you give us a like and a follow, hit that uh, bell button so you'll be notified when we, uh, when we go live again. We go live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Monday is cycling specific workout with a special guest and Wednesday is uh, you know similar to what you saw today some strength or flexibility work and then um, Friday we have a live Q&A slash kind of discussion with a special guest and this Friday uh, we have Colin Strickland and teammate Katie joining us uh, this Friday for a Q&A we'll be talking about kind of all like training preparation for ultra endurance sort of events similar to uh, DK 200 Dirty Kansas 200 that is if you're not familiar um, of which uh, Colin Strickland won last year. Not only won, but broke the record for the course on an extremely difficult day to do so. Rode away from World Tour pros uh, and stayed away for the win and the uh, record. So we will get to hear that whole story as well as uh, 2020 plans and, and stuff that goes way beyond cycling, uh, projects that they're working on and things that they're passionate about. Uh, beyond just the sport of cycling. So uh, join us for that, uh, have your questions ready. And um, that'll be that'll be a fun one for sure. And we will catch you. Final thing I want to say is uh, about Sufferfest. All the information about Sufferfest training is down in the description below, as well as a link to the playlist on YouTube to watch all these videos again. So if you want to go back and do some of these workouts, you can, or you can go ahead and open them up directly in the Sufferfest app. Uh, that's all available to you right there in the description below. Thanks a lot, and we will catch you guys on Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Take care.